The EPSA podcast provides convenient access to information on various EPSA events and opportunities, plus topics that impact pharmaceutical students from inside into different fields in pharmacy, career options, experiences from professionals and EPSA members. Join us as we fuel our passion for pharmacy one conversation at a time. Prepare to learn more, be encouraged and inspired. You're listening to the EPSA podcast with me, your host, Miracle Udokang. Today we have a special guest, Jagresh Seen Tandy. Hello, Jagresh. It's a pleasure to have you with us. For listeners that haven't come across you, could you introduce yourself and share with the listeners a bit more about yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Jagresh Singh Tandy. I'm a fourth and final year student at the University of Birmingham. Uh, I'm an international representative from the British Pharmaceutical Students Association, or the BPSA, and I've helped with various types of projects throughout the year uh, for the ER, PR, and educational department. Uh, these include giving talks as part of the EPSA Autumn Assembly last year, as well as engaging with the mentoring project and being on the EPSA PR subcommittee. I've also helped with the IPSF throughout the year with their student exchange program. And also both Hira and Rami, the um, two chairpersons for IPSF Public Health, as well as Mike Gore Franken, um, the Public Health and Social Services Coordinator for EPSA with various public health campaigns throughout the year, uh, including a joint BPSA EPSA IPSF public health campaign for World AIDS Day 2019. Um, during the EPSA Autumn Assembly, I presented my research project as part of the Symposium for Young Professionals on the dermatological toxicity associated with fatinib for the treatment of non-small cell lung cancer uh, and gave a talk as part of the RX EPSA session uh, on picking a great research topic. I also had the opportunity to participate in a live public health campaign uh, where we provided essential point of care tests for cardiovascular and metabolic diseases the general public of Croatia, uh, which brought to my attention that public health campaigns are a great way for pharmacists to change public perceptions and provide a public service. Finally, which is why we're here today, I entered a competition for Genos and Glycan Age, where we had to write an essay on how glycomics can improve patient counselling, and I then gave a short sales pitch based on this essay and glycomics. Uh, the competition for this competition was tough. Um, and there was some really great candidates and really great ideas. So it was therefore great to win this internship with Genos and to work in their genetics and glycomics lab. Let's talk a bit on the competition for Genus and Glycan Age, which you took part in and emerged winner. By winning, you got an opportunity to have internship experience in Croatia, which by the way, must have been a really exciting experience for you. What prompted you to take part in this competition at the EPSA Autumn Assembly? Yeah, sure. So shortly after I heard about the EPSA Autumn Assembly, I applied for funding from my university to actually attend the event. Uh, this was because I've been looking to attend an EPSA event for quite some while. Um, and I also wanted to attend an event focusing on personalised medicine. Uh, so this event was perfect to attend for me personally. Uh, this event exceeded any expectations I had going in uh, because not only was the educational program designed and bespoke to you as an individual and designed to actually maximize student engagement, but all of the reception committee and EPSA team were so approachable leading up to the event, during the event, and even after the event uh, that it was kind of quite infectious. Uh, and I wanted to kind of stick with EPSA and engage with them as much as possible throughout the year. Um, so in terms of why I chose to apply for this competition, I think I just wanted to get involved as much as possible with the educational program as it seemed so well designed. And every time an opportunity was emailed over to us of ways we could participate, I applied and I kind of signed up without hesitation. Uh, I had never actually heard of glycomics as a field before, um, before the start of this competition. So it was a great insight into a new field. And to be honest, I never actually saw this as a competition. This was all, that was always secondary to me. Uh, I always saw this as a learning opportunity um, and to learn more about a field which I'd never even heard before and to develop my presentation skills. 
I mean, I could have also entered the IPSF marketing competition, but as I was also doing a couple of other talks for apps to join the symposium, as I mentioned before, and participating in the live public health campaign, I didn't think I would have had the time to attend the other talks and attend the three or four sessions uh, for this competition. So sadly, this was one of the only kind of uh, competitions which I had to uh, give up the opportunity to participate in. But I'm glad I participated in the um, competition for Genos. That's interesting. So while in Croatia, you had your internship in both Genos Limited and in a community pharmacy. Could you tell us about your experiences in both? Sure. So um, in terms of how I went about organizing the, um, the community pharmacy, what I did was I approached Antonia, um, who was a representative from Belupo, um, and she helped me put together a couple of days uh, with their company, uh, their community pharmacy, as I already told her that we were, I was doing an internship with Genos, uh, so it tied in nicely. Um, so as part of the internship with Genos in Croatia, I worked alongside scientists investigating glycan and genomic changes and their effect on disease prognosis and pathology. Uh, as I said before, I won this internship as a result of writing an essay on glycomics and then giving a sales pitch. Uh, the internship, if I'm honest, was quite stressful, but it was also highly rewarding as it highlighted to me the role of medical tests as well as pharmaceutical tests in personalized healthcare. The first week I spent in the glycomics lab, uh, working alongside scientists looking at glycan changes and how that affects different disease pathology. And I got to use technology which I've never used before, such as IgG elution um, and uh, using a protein G plate, as well as using an SDS page for electrophoresis. In the second week, I worked alongside scientists in the genetics lab uh, and used polymerase chain reactions, so PCR to investigate nu single nucleotide polymorphisms in clotting, clotting factor genes uh, from patient buccal swabs. So uh, that's a bit about my time with Genos. Uh, a bit about my time with Belupo, the community pharmacy in Croatia. Uh, I found that um, community pharmacists will often use more extemporaneous and herbal preparations than we do in the UK, where we use predominantly manufactured pharmaceuticals. Uh, I can see the rationale for using extemporaneous preparation and also manufactured pharmaceuticals as extemporaneous preparations will kind of allow you to personalize it more and tailor the preparation to the individual patient, whereas a manufactured pharmaceutical has less batch batch variability. Um, so both are good in our own ways. Um, and I also found that patients in Croatia who have had the extemporaneous preparations uh, were quite grateful that you'd taken the time to actually make the product for them. So, as I said, I could see the uh, advantages and disadvantages to both, and it was a really great experience. Did you face any challenges working at Genus Limited? If yes, could you shed more light on those and also share with us some of your most enjoyable experiences working there? Yeah. Uh, sure. So in the actual glycomics lab, I worked on several projects, uh, which included working with blinded rheumatoid arthritis samples for earlier diagnosis of RA, as well as blood samples for glycan age. So glycan age was there to answer a fundamental question of how does your biological age compare to your chronic age and what role does your glycan profile kind of play in that? Um, I also worked on distinguishing IgG from transferrin using an SDS page as they have a very similar molecular weight profile. So IgG is about 65 kilodaltons and transferrin has a molecular weight of uh, 60 kilodaltons. So as you can see, they're quite similar. So they're quite difficult to separate using an SDS page. So we had to initially separate them using an SDS page, but then we also had to use a protein G plate, which binds to the IgG in order to see if we actually had um, IgG present or transferrin because the transferrin wouldn't bind, but the IgG would. Uh, this was actually quite difficult to stay on top of and I often felt quite overwhelmed um, because each scientist had about four to five different projects they were doing simultaneously. And I was coming into the project at various different stages with little to no background knowledge uh, of the actual topic because glycans, as I said before, is 
quite an emerging field. Uh, so it was quite difficult to summarize and process the data of each um, day at the end. Uh, and I often got confused between uh, using a protein G plate and a GHP plate, to the great amusement of the staff. Uh, although this actually showed me that if you show engagement in the field and a willingness to learn, then the knowledge of the actual subject is secondary, to building a good working relationship. So that was a bit about my time in the glycomics lab, uh, a bit about my time in the genetics lab. Um, so I actually performed Western blot analysis, uh, which we've done as part of our course. Um, but it was great to see in practice to actually investigate gene activation in type 1 HNF1 alpha diabetes. Um, and it was a great recap to those practicals that we'd done previously. Uh, I also worked with polymerase chain reaction, as I said before, to investigate clotting factor SNPs, so single nucleotide polymorphisms from patient buccal swabs. And this allowed me to actually identify these mutations using um, PCR, so polymerase chain reaction uh, for prothrombin, MTHFR, serpin, and F13A1 genes, which was quite interesting. Uh, I also had the opportunity to look at capillary gel electrophoresis for end glycan analysis. Uh, I'd never actually covered that before, but it was really interesting. Um, I felt there was a significant knowledge gap here, though, and there, I was asking the same question repeatedly because the scientist uh, I was working with struggled to speak English, um, but also I struggled to speak Croatian. Um, but uh, the scientist was clearly very passionate uh, and was willing to teach me um, not only kind of the subject of genetics, but also a bit of Croatian as well, so I could um, understand things a bit better. Therefore, I tried to kind of draw diagrams more to convey what I was saying, but also use less kind of English technical terms, uh, which would often confuse confuse the scientist, uh, and also just kind of try and implement some Croatian when I was actually reading over the kind of SOP, so standard operating procedures. You stated before that your time in Croatia helped you reflect more on what you're passionate about. Could you tell us how these internship experiences have benefited you both personally and professionally and what's next for Jagrish after now? So in terms of how this in internship has actually benefited me personally and professionally, uh, I realized over the course of the placement that pharmacists are both healthcare professionals and scientists. Therefore, it's essential for us to actually understand the role of a scientist as well as the role of a healthcare professional. Um, so as a scientist, um, we have to develop a process and the actual methodology. But as a healthcare professional, we have a role uh, to put that information that we've gathered into context of the patient. So I think both are important and Irrespective of whether I choose to work in industry or in a clinic, I'll try to actually implement these principles into my daily practice. Uh, in terms of what's next for me, um, as I haven't really experienced kind of working with medical tests before, and I have only really investigated researching pharmaceutical products and drugs, uh, this brought into question whether I fundamentally wanted to go into research and development within the pharmaceutical industry. As I see, healthcare is broadly a combination of pharmaceutical and medical interventions. So it led me to the question of, am I missing half the picture by just solely focusing on the pharmaceutical interventions and not exploring the role of medicine within personalized healthcare? Uh, after returning to the UK, I actually met with my dissertation supervisor, who's the consultant hematology pharmacist at my local hospital, and discussed my placement with him. Uh, he was very impe impressed uh, with the structure of the placement. I was able to reflect uh, on what I was passionate about and whether it was oncology or hematology, immunology, genetics, or even a field which I'd never even seen before. Uh, so in summary, I would just say that this internship has actually highlighted to me that I enjoyed designing and developing medical tests as well as pharmaceutical products. And I need to explore the role of medical research as well as pharmaceutical research in personalized healthcare and targeted therapies. So I want to hear from you. How do you think pharmaceutical students should prepare and position themselves for internship and work-related experience? Yeah, so I think the important thing to consider with this question is what happens when you don't get an internship, uh, which is 
just as likely as getting an internship because um, it's always quite competitive to get one. So when I was applying for internships with AstraZeneca and GSK for just a summer internship, so two uh, ten week programs, um, obviously internships advertised through IMP can be much longer than that, so up to six months. Uh, the competition for just these kind of summer internships was actually very long uh, and very kind of competitive. So I think just to get an actual interview, the chances were 35 to 1. Uh, and then it was about 50-50, so 14 applicants. Uh, and then seven were selected for a place uh, on the actual internship program. So 50-50 at the inter uh, interview stage. So I think it's just important to take a step back and learn how to handle kind of rejection and learn from your past mistakes. Uh, if you don't get in the position, don't beat your, uh, yourself up over it because at the end of the day, it may not necessarily be that you weren't the right candidate, but you're up against candidates who are all uh, successful um, and who are all strong. And at the end of the day, you know, the company has to pick one or two people for a role which has 500 applicants. So based on that, I would just say the best traits you could have as an applicant would be to be resilient and also exercise humility wherever possible uh, when applying for an internship and just have an awareness that things don't always go to plan. And at the end of the day, not getting a position and learning from your mistakes uh, is just as important as, you know, getting the internship. Uh, and it will actually make you a better person and a candidate as a result of it. So in terms of preparing and positioning yourself for an internship, I say apply to a diverse range of internships and not just the ones you're passionate about. Test the waters uh, and explore new fields as well as digging deeper in, uh, to see the specific avenue that you'd like to go down with your career. Um, EPSA always posts great internship opportunities through IMP, Twinit and Mobility projects. But outside of EPSA, you've also got Farmadelic as well which not only posts internship opportunities, but regular podcasts and insights into the field. Um, the IPSF also has projects um, on their own, including the Student Exchange Programme, which is great also for just gaining international experience. Awesome. So now we'll be moving on to even more interesting questions. You have less than five seconds to answer each. Hope you're ready, though. If you could learn to do anything... What would it be and why? Oh, good question. Uh, I think when asked this question, the thing people naturally jump to would be to stop procrastinating and to be more proactive. Um, to be honest, procrastination is both a blessing and a burden. It's good in a way because it actually, we don't normally have ideas when we're hard at work and transcribing notes. That's not when ideas come to us. Uh, it's normally when we kind of take a step back take time to ourselves and when we're doing nothing um, that our mind goes on autopilot and we start to process the events that we're experiencing. That's when we actually start to have ideas. It's not when we're kind of uh, in the mundane and hard at work uh, transcribing notes. So, but on the other hand, um, as opposed to that, as with anything, too much procrastination means you wouldn't get anything done at all. Um, what's the use in having an idea if you can't translate that into practice? So based on all that, I think the thing I would really like to learn um, is how to balance my time effectively between working effectively, but also taking the time to process the information. And that's a powerful response. So the next question, what's the personal mantra you live by? Yeah, so I wouldn't say I'm a great model, role model, but... Um, my personal mantra or phrase I live by is wherever there's engagement, productivity will naturally follow. Uh, I think people try to be productive, productive uh, in something they're not engaged with, which leads to a lot of procrast procrastination. Um, that's not necessarily bad, but you wouldn't actually get anything done. So if you want to be productive, then you must first engage with the topic, um, which means finding the area of that topic which you're most passionate about. Sometimes it takes a bit of digging. But and with this, it's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jagresh, for agreeing to share your time, your experiences and knowledge with us. We wish you the very best on your future plans. And to our amazing listeners, 
thank you for tuning in and we hope you join us again as we continue to bring pharmacy knowledge and students together take care